What's up YouTube, it is your boy JB and we are here today with a new review for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta Season 10, Episode 3, the episode was titled Oh Baby I don't know who that was, I guess that was for Eric and Safari Alright, so before we get into the review, if you guys are watching the video or any other video on the channel not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button you guys stop taking me out on dates and I get, end up getting stuck with the bill so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. <sighs> this show is kind of dead. Not, de not dead, but it's it's a slow burn. It's a slow burn. But let's get into it, shall we? All right, you guys. Let's talk about Erica and Safari, right? So the episode opens up and we see Erica and Erica is doing this photo shoot. Mind you, Erica looks like she's about, mm, she's it looks like she's in her third trimester doing this photo shoot, no safari. In her interview with the producers, she's still talking about the fact that she hasn't told safari. The editing in this episode, the editing with safari and Erica is terrible. Like, hands down, terrible. Now, she does say that safari gave her an apology about you know him saying that you know getting married was the, his biggest mistake right the apology he gave her was piss poor at pop piss poor at best that wasn't an apology but if erica wanted to take it whatever so then we see erica and safari so they're getting ready they're going out and they're meeting up with the rest of the cast because it's yandy's birthday now i'm not going to talk about yandy's birthday right yet right now we're going to hold that off. But once so Erica got out the car, to mind you, once again, she's talking to the producers in her interview. And she's talking about, you know, people don't know that I'm pregnant. I'm not really showing. I'm like, girl, a lot don't care who tell it. You are showing. Like, I can see your stomach. Like, And the thing with Erica was, if you look that that shirt, she, that blouse she had on, you're trying to cover. I don't know if you were trying to cover up or what, but if you looked at it, because it was open right here. And you could still see her baby bump. I'm like, who are y'all fooling? Like, this storyline is stupid with these two. Like, this is the dumbest storyline. I, I, I'm sorry. This storyline makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. <sighs> Again, like I said, Erica. So, okay. Let's just keep going. So, we see Erica. So, Erica is going to have um, Spice come over, right? Well, Spice came over because she's going to do this whole surprise for Safari, which I don't know what the surprise was. I guess it was just to reveal to him that the, she was pregnant, which he already knew, but I don't know. So Safari came, the girls came out, blindfolded him, took him in. He saw Spice by the pool, dancing, singing, whatever. And I was still looking at Erica's stomach. I'm like, so are we still pretending like we don't know that Erica's pregnant? We're still gonna pretend like we don't know she's pregnant, huh? Okay, I can't get past this. So far as like, this is what he wants every day. So you wanna be treated, so you want her to do this for you every day. You want her to go above and beyond for you and you do nothing for her, basically. I could not be, Erica's better than me because I couldn't be married to somebody like a safari, right? So then she sits down with him and she tells him she has something to tell him. So she presents him with the phone and it's the sonogram and his face. So how do you feel? Oh God. I'm sorry. He knew. And it's just the fact that you guys are pretending like you guys did not know that you were pregnant. In the very first episode, when they had that first blow up, when she was in them in in the, whenever in the kitchen, and she kept pulling her pants up, I'm like, "You're pregnant. You were pregnant in that scene. You were pregnant." This is frustrating to me. Like it's with Eric and Safari, it just makes you question and wonder how much is real with them. Like, what is really real with them? Now we know what's going on in the blocks currently. That Safari. When she had the baby, she was actually due yesterday. She was actually just due yesterday with the with little legend. But 
she's she was in a hospital. He went to Jamaica. <sighs> I just oh gosh. Okay, I just again question how much of this is just real with Eric and Safari. Now when that when that nigga got on that dirt bike on that four wheeler, and he he and went back. I was like I really I really wish that it had fell back on him. So yeah, here in my notes it says that the storyline with Erica and Safari, it's all over the place. It really is. It's the storyline is all over the place. The editing is all over the place. Everything is all over the place. I'm like, how do y'all expect us to believe this shit? Cuz I don't. But I'm gonna move on cuz I'm tired of talking about it. All right, guys, let's talk about Yandy's party real quick. So, we see Yandy Mendeecy's gave her a party because you guys remember COVID hit and a lot of people if your birthday was if your birthday wasn't before um like when did we shut when did everything shut down like March of last year so if your birthday wasn't before March then you didn't have a pan you had a pandemic birthday so they're doing this and then we see Safari he was talking to um um Scrappy Erica was talking to um Bambi so Scrap, so Safari asked Scrappy how are things going with him and Bambi, right? And here's another person I think is playing up for the cameras, because Bambi and Scrappy, you know, Bambi was talking about how you know um, Safari, some uh, Scrappy says he's cooking for her in bed. She says she does get it, but it's not like he's making it out to be like it's an everyday thing. So I just, is it? Are we at the point in this show where people are making up storylines? You know, you, you know, especially the married couples, they're making up storylines. Have we gotten to that point? Okay, whatever. So then we also see Messy Red show up, and she introduces the group to Lamar Odom, as if they did not know who the hell Lamar was. Now. Th- yeah, I think we're getting to the point where we're just making up storylines at this point. Carly said that she and Lamar have known each other for some time now, but they never, you know, they never tried to get with each other. But then they saw each other in Miami and they reconnected, right? I was like, girl, a lie don't care who tell it. The fuck? Like, you lying. I just didn't, I didn't buy, I don't buy any of this. So I'm going to tell you guys two storylines that I don't buy. Carly Red. And Eric and Safari. And I'm iffy when it comes to Bambi and Scrappy. But I definitely don't believe anything with Messy Red. And I sure as hell don't believe the storyline between Eric and Safari. Don't believe that storyline at all. <sighs> God. So Mendeecy's presented Yandy with a Rolls Royce for her birthday. That was it. I'm going to go ahead and add Scrappy and... um. Messy Red to this as well because I don't know where to place them. So we see Safari and um, actually Sc- Scrappy. So Scrappy did tell um, Safari he was having a, a concert or a performance and for him to pull up and for him to come and, you know, perform with him. So that's exactly what Safari did. He pulled up and he did the performance. Okay. It was it was typical Safari. What else can you say? So then, you know, Safari is telling Scrappy how good he did after the after the performance and how Bambi should rub his feet. I'm like, but she's the pregnant one. Scrappy should be rubbing her feet. God, this show right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So then Safari tells Scrappy that he's going to get a vasectomy. I'm like, because he doesn't want to have any more kids. I'm like, your wife is already pregnant, dude. But then he said when Eric and him went home after the after Yandy's party, things got better. I'm like, how in the hell did things get better after a party? Being around, he's saying being around, you know, being around all of them, like Rashida and Kirk and Scrappy and Bambi. Chow, how? Because let Scrappy tell him and Bambi are not in a good space. And Kirk and Rashida, they full of it every season. Okay. We're just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. Then Messy Red. Did y'all know that she had a restaurant down there in Atlanta? Speaking of her, whatever happened to her restaurant, I mean, not her restaurant, but 
her clothing store was it named Mercy out there in the mall in, in one of those malls in, in, in Atlanta? Was it Lennox? Is that where I'm, or was it uh no Rashida's I, I think she was in Lennox. Let me I'm, I, don't give me the line. But whatever happened to that story, right? So here we go once again with this storyline with Lamar. It is not real at all. It is fake as hell. <sighs> Now the one thing that Lamar said in this in this in this scene that was true was the fact that he moves fast in his relationships. That we do know. Cause here's my thing. What is the timeline with them? Well, I know what the timeline is. I know what the timeline is with them because this was earlier in the year when we saw those, like around March. But when did he break up with that Sabrina girl? Or, or are they like when did him and that Sabrina because he was engaged to that Sabrina Parr girl, right? Again, fake storyline. I'm going to keep moving. All right, you guys. Um, Next up, let's talk about Young Baby Tate, right? So, remember in the last episode, Young Baby Tate told us that she was going to go out to L.A., you know, to see her do Guap 4000 or something like that. And she's out there with him. She picks him up. She tells us he's a Grammy-nominated artist. I'm like, they played his song. I'm like, oh, Never heard of him. And he's Grammy nominated. What Grammys? The Latin Grammys? Like, what Grammys is he nominated for? Because I never, I'm, I watch the Grammys every year. I don't remember seeing this man on the Grammys. Did you, have you guys saw him? Do you guys know who he is? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm not taking away from him. I'm just like, when was he nominated for a Grammy? I've never heard of him. Ever. Ever. He does have a soft voice, I will say that. So, young baby Tay tells us that she's known him for the last two years, right? But for a full year, she was in a committed relationship, but that is now over. So now, you know, she and he, him, him and her, they're taking their time getting to know each other, right? So, they go to the beach, and, you know, she tells him that she's going to go on a vacation, you know, to Jamaica for her birthday. And she asked him if he would come with her. He says, well, you know, <laughs> my brother is getting married, but... I'll let you know. What are you going to let me know? You just said your brother's getting married. So are you going to the wedding or not? Like, it ain't no, I'll let you know. Maybe he didn't have the, I don't, don't say that. So then we later see her with her friend, you know, her brother. And she's also with Britney B. Now we know Britney B. from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Was it season six? It was a season where they had the terrible graphics. In the green in the green screen it was that season and i believe that was season yep that was season six when they brought on big fish <sighs> um so i don't think guap is it for young baby tate i think he i think maybe he found out she was on love and hip-hop and he said you know what let me get some camera time because when they were sitting there talking and she was talking about are they in a relationship or are they, you know, is he her, her, her dude or whatever. He was he was coming off as a bit of a player, right? Now, I want people to do two things for me. Number one, stop comparing yourselves to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Number two, stop trying to be like Jay-Z and Beyonce. There's only one Jay-Z and Beyonce. And when people say, oh, I want to be like J&B. Y'all don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I wish people would stop saying that. Be your own. Like, like if you got people in your family that are married, let them be your couple's goals. Don't let, don't let other people be your couple's goals. Like, if you got, if your parents are together, let your parents be your couple's goals, not people that you don't know. Now, you guys know I love Jay Z and Beyonce, but they would never be my couple's goals. Sorry to say it. So they then play this game: two truths and a lie. So Brittany B went, she said she's had a threesome with two girls, she is Grammy nominated, and she has a child in some other country. The child in the other country was a lie. So then, little, little, little homie, um, he goes, whatever his name, I forgot what his name is already, little homie, y'all know what I'm talking about, Guap, Guap, that's his name. He goes, so his was, um, he was born in 1991, he's going to Jamaica, and it was another one. I forgot what it was. And Tate was like, well, he wasn't born in 91. He says, but on my birth certificate. She says, okay, hold on. Which one is a lie? He says, I'm not going to Jamaica. 
why would you do that? I was with Tay. She got pissed off. She said, you know what? Every, you got to get out. Like, this is my Airbnb. You got to see your way up out of here. And I was with Tay for that one. Like, get him out. Like I said, I think he was just looking for some camera time. I really think he was. But let's move on and wrap the episode up. I don't know how long this is. It might be short. <sighs> Honestly, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta really, really, really at this point, like I said, it's just not giving what Love and Hip Hop normally gives. I think for me with Love and Hip Hop, I'm not through with Love and Hip Hop. I think for me with this season so far, it's Eric and Safari that's draining my spirit. That's it. If it wasn't for Eric and Safari, I think I, I would be okay with the show because you guys see, I gave I did, you know, I didn't have an issue talking about Baby Tate. But let's move on. All right, you guys, let's wrap up and talk about Yandy. So is Yandy using Infinity for a storyline? Because, I mean, I'm really getting that vibe that she used her for a storyline, right? So we see Yandy and Mendeecees. They're out with the kids, and they are playing, you know, they're at the basketball court. So it looked like Lil Mendeecees was there as well as the other little boy, who I think Erica's son, right? Was that Erica's child? I mean, it, it got to be, right? Because those are the only kids he got, right, that we know of. The one with Lil Mendeecees with Samantha. And I can't ever, I don't remember the baby's name that he has with Erica. And then the two with Yandy. So, but then I have a question about that. How many kids does Mendeecees have? So, Yandy, he's happy to have all his kids together, right? So, she tells him that Infinity had reached out to her. And, you know, Yandy says that, you know, Infinity had got mad at her. Because for Christmas, um, they posted a photo with all of Mendeecee's kids. But I was looking at this one tall person in the picture. I'm like, who the hell is that? Like, how many kids does Mendeecee have? Like, how many does he have? But, um, so she said that, um, Infinity felt some type of way. So then Infinity went on her social media to blast them. She said the blogs got a hold of it. What blogs? Because I never knew about it. And I stay on Instagram. Never once saw it. If you guys saw it, let me know. Again, he, me, never saw it. So she said that she invited Infinity to the house, but Infinity told her that she was going to go and stay with her family. When in the hell did Yandy move to Atlanta? Because it, 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 didn't, dawn, it, it, it didn't dawn on me until she sat down with Infinity that this Christmas, they were they weren't in New for Christmas. They weren't in New York. They were already in Atlanta. So when the hell did they move to Atlanta? I don't know. Don't care, right? So then Yandy says that you know people beat her up because they feel that when Mendeecees got out of prison, that you know she threw Infinity to the side, which I don't think that's the case. And we all know with Infinity being a ward of the state and Mendeecees being a felon. He couldn't, they couldn't live in the same house with each other, which I don't know if they, I don't know how they made that work. <sighs> so then she tells him that, you know, like I said, Infinity texted her, told her that she was coming out to Atlanta. He says, well, where is she staying? She says she want to come to the house. He's like, uh-uh, like, I don't want to be uncomfortable in my own house, which I'm, I agree with Mendeecees about that one. You're not going to come to my house with, you know, and so, you know, discord and, and, you know, disturb, disturb my peace. I get that. I'm with him on that one. So he says, you got to meet her first and then fill her out. And then, you know, if she, you, can, you can invite her to the house. So then we do see Yandy and she meets up with Infinity, right? So Infinity tells Yandy how she's doing in school, that she got a three point something grade GPA in, in school. So that's good. She's in college. So Infinity talks to Yandy about Christmas. She says, you know, when was the last time? The last time Infinity was there was for Thanksgiving. And then she talks about Christmas, right? And she says that she didn't feel welcomed. And Yandy's like, I told you, you know, you know, to calm down. She says, yeah, but it just didn't feel like a warm welcome. I don't know what that meant, but whatever. So she just said that she just felt left out when she saw, saw the pictures on social media. She just felt left out, right? So then we go a little bit deeper into what is going on between Yandy and Infinity, right? So Yandy let us know that Infinity, and she actually said this on camera in front of Infinity, which Infinity got upset about, which I mean, I, I, I get it. 
she felt like Leandy because she said, if it was Amir and Skylar, you wouldn't have done this shit. So Yandy's telling, um, talking about the fact that I guess when Infinity was 17, she dated a guy that was older, right? And that guy came in between them. And the guy, I guess, wanted to go to social media and um, he wanted to go to social media. He wanted to tell people that Yandy was in the hotel rooms and in the clubs, abandoning her kids. She was in the club shaking her ass and abandoning her kids. But Yandy was like, you know, I was in the clubs working. And we all know when it comes to like reality TV shows, you know, like they get those 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 booking those hosting gigs in clubs, and that's what they do. They make their money in in the clubs before the pandemic. Well, actually, even now, even now, I still see a, I see a lot of them. I see a lot of people on flyers talking about they ha they having a party. I'm not at that stage in my life where I want to go to a party, but whatever. Like I said, but Infinity did get upset with Andy because she's like, you know. You just said this shit on camera. If this was Skylar and Amir, you wouldn't have done that. She's like, you know what? I'm done. And she gets up and leaving. Honestly, I don't blame her. Like, why would you bring something up like that on camera? Why would you do it? So, and I did, I, before I even got on here, I was looking on Twitter and people are going in on her. There are a lot of people saying that she felt, they felt like Yandy used this as a storyline. I mean, are we surprised? Are we surprised? But that's it you guys that's love and hip-hop atlanta um i ain't got nothing else for you guys so uh like the video you guys leave your comments in the comment section below subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell button stay safe you guys take care of yourselves wash your hands wear your, your mask or not whichever one you guys decide to do stay safe be blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys